Alaric lay exhausted on the cold shingle, listening to the musical sound that the tide made as it drew back over the stones. Another sound joined that of the surf, and he recognised it as the crunch of boots. Someone was coming towards him. In Shatsar was most likely to be an enemy. He rolled over and began scrambling to his feet, drawing the last reserves from his worn-out body. His right hand had half-drawn Stormbringer from its scabbard before he realised that it was Moonglam, bent with weariness, standing grinning before him. Thank the gods you live. Moonglam lowered himself to the shingle and leaned back with his arms supporting his weight. Regarding the now calm sea and the towering serpent's teeth in the distance. And I think the gods had indeed something to do with our shipwreck and rescue both. Aye, we live. Elric moodily squatted down. But for how long in this ruined land, I cannot guess. Moonglum shook his head and laughed lightly. You're still the gloomy one, friend. Be thankful for your life, say I. Small mercies are all but useless in this conflict, Elric said. Rest now, Moonglum, while I watch, then you can take my place. There was no time to lose and we began this adventure. Now we've lost days. Moonglum gave no argument, but allowed himself immediately to sleep. And when he awoke, much refreshed, though aching still, Elric slept until the moon was high and shining brightly in the clear sky. They trudged through the night the sparse grass of the coast region giving way to wet, blackened ground. It was as if a holocaust had raged over the countryside, followed by a rainstorm which had left behind it a marsh of ashes. Remembering the grassy plains of the part of Shatsar, Arik was horrified, unable to tell whether men or the creatures of chaos had caused such wanton ruin. Noon was approaching, with a hint of weird disturbances in the bright clouded sky. When they saw a long line of people coming towards them, they flattened themselves behind a small rise and peered cautiously over it as the party drew nearer. These were no enemy soldiers, but gaunt women and starving children, men who staggered in rags and a few battered riders obviously the remnants of some defeated band of partisans who had held out against Jagreen Lurn. I think we'll find friends of sorts here, Auric muttered thankfully, perhaps some information which will help us. They arose and walked towards the wretched herd. The riders quickly grouped around the civilians and drew their weapons, but before any challenges could be given, someone cried from the enclosed ranks, Alric of Malnibane. Alric, have you come with news of my rescue? Alric did not recognise the voice, but, but he knew his face was a legend, with its dead white skin and glowing crimson eyes. I'm seeking rescue myself, friend, he said with poorly assumed cheerfulness. We were shipwrecks on your coasts while trying to seek help in the Southlands, but unless we find another ship our chances are poor. Which way did you sail, Elric? said the unseen spokesman. South, I told you. Well, then you were going in the wrong direction. Elric straightened his back and tried to peer into the throng. Who are you to tell us that? There was a movement in the crowd, and a bent, middle-aged man with a long, curling moustache adorning his fair-skinned face broke from the ranks and stood leaning on a staff. The riders drew back their horses so that Elric could see him properly. I am named Ohada the Seer, once famous in Aflatane as an oracle. But Aflatane was raised in the sack of Shatsar, and I was lucky enough to escape with these few people who are all from Aflatane, one of the last cities to fall before Pantang's sorceress might. I have a message of great import for you, Elric. It is for your ears only, and I received it from one you know. One who may help you, and indirectly us. You have piqued my curiosity, and raised my hopes. 
Ulrich beckoned with his hand. Come, sir, tell me your news, and let's all trust it is as good as you hint. Munglam took a step back as the seer approached. Both he and the Aflatanians watched with curiosity as Ohada whispered to Alric. Alric himself had to strain to catch the words. I bear a message from a strange man called Separates. He says that he sent the storm, but there is something which you must do that he cannot. He says to go to the carved city and there he will enlighten you further. Separates? But I have recently left him. How did he contact you? I am a clairvoyant. He came to me in a dream. Your words could be treacherous, designed to lead me into Jagreen Lurn's hands. Separates added one thing to what he said. He told me that we should meet on this very spot. Could Jagreen Lurn know that? Unlikely, but by the same reckoning, could anyone know that? He nodded. Thanks, Seer. Then he shouted to the mounted warriors. We need a pair of horses, your best. Our horses are valuable to us, grumbled a knight in torn armour. They are all we have. My companions and I need to move swiftly if we are to save the world from chaos. Come, risk a pair of horses against the chance of vengeance on your conquerors. Aye, very well. The knight dismounted, and so did the man beside him. They led their steeds up to Elric and Moonglum. Elric took the reins and swung himself into the saddle, the huge rune sword slapping against his side. I will, said he. And what are your plans now? Yeah, we'll fight on as best we can. Would it not be wiser to hide in the mountains or the marshes of the mist? Few had witnessed the depravity and terror of Jagreen Lurn's rule, you would not make such an inquiry, the knight said bleakly. Oh, we cannot hope to win against a warlock whose servants can command the very earth to heave like an ocean, pull down floods of salt water from the sky, and send green clouds scudding down to destroy children in nameless ways. We shall take what vengeance we can. This part of the continent is calm beside what is going on elsewhere. Dreadful geological changes are taking place. You would not recognise a hill or forest ten miles north. And those that you passed one day might well have changed or disappeared the next. We have witnessed something of the like on our sea journey, Elric nodded. I wish you a long life of revenge, friend. I myself have scores to settle with Jagreen Lurn and his accomplice. His accomplice? Do you mean King Sorosto of Dardajor? A thin smile crossed the knight's haggard face. You'll take no vengeance on Sorosto. He was assassinated soon after our forces were vanquished at the Battle of Sequa. Though nothing was proved, it is common knowledge that he was killed at the orders of the Theocrat, who now rules unchallenged. The knight shrugged. And who can stand for long against Jagreen Lurn, let alone his captains? Who are these captains? Why, he has summoned the Dukes of Hell to him. Whether they will accept his mastery much longer, I do not know. It is our belief that Jagreen Lurn will be the next to die, and Hell unchecked will rule in his place. I hope not, Auric said softly. For I won't be cheated of my vengeance. The knight sighed. With the Dukes of Hell as his allies, Jagreen Lurn will soon rule the world. Well, let us pray I can find a means of disposing of that dark aristocracy, and keeping my vow to slay Jagreen Lurn, Elric said, and with a wave of thanks to the seer and the two knights, turned his horse towards the mountains of Jacor, Moonglum in his wake. They got little rest on their perilous ride to the mountain home of Separates, for, as the knight had told them, the ground itself seemed alive and anarchy ruled everywhere. Afterwards, Elric remembered little, save a feeling of utter horror and the noise of unholy screechings in his ear. Dark colours, gold, reds, blues, black, and the flaring orange that was everywhere the sign of chaos on earth. 
and the mountain regions close to Nechrain, the rule of chaos was not so complete as in other places. This proved that Separates and his nine black brothers were exerting at least some control against the forces threatening to engulf them. Through steep gorges of towering black rock, along treacherous mountain paths, down slopes that rattled with loose stones and seemed likely to start an avalanche, they pressed deeper and deeper into the heart of the ancient mountains. These were the oldest mountains in the world, and they held one of the Earth's most ancient secrets, the domain of the immortal Nechrain, who had ruled for centuries even before the coming of the Melnoboneans. At last they came to the hewn city of Nechrain, its towering palaces, temples and fortresses carved into the living black granite, hidden in the depths of the chasm that might have been bottomless. Virtually cut off from all but the faintest filterings of sunlight that had brooded here since earliest times. Down the narrow paths that guided their reluctant steeds until they reached a huge gateway, its pillars carved with the figures of titans and half-men looming above them, so that Moonglum gasped and immediately fell silent, overawed by the genius which could accomplish the twin feats of gigantic engineering and powerful art. In the caverns, also carved to represent scenes from the legends of the Nehraean, separates awaited them, a welcoming smile on his thin-lipped ebony face. Greeting separates, Ulrich dismounted and allowed slaves to lead his horse away. Moonglum did likewise a trifle wearily. I am sorry to have called you back so soon, but Jagreen Lurn has moved more swiftly than we anticipated. Separates clasped Ulrich's shoulders. I have heard... He has already summoned the Dark Lords. Yes, we ourselves were trying to contact the White Lords with the aid until recently of the Hermit Magicians of the Sorcerer's Isle. But Jagreen Lurn's war fleet destroyed the island. Chaos has blocked our attempts to rescue the Hermits. My brothers still strive to find the White Lords on the higher plains. But there is work for you and your sword closer to home. Come to my chamber and refresh yourselves. We have some wine which will revitalise you. When you have drunk your fill, I'll tell you what task fate has decided for you now. Sitting in his chair, sipping his wine and glancing around Separitz's dark chamber, lighted only by the fires which burned in its several grates, Ulrich searched his mind for some clue to the unidentifiable impressions which seemed to drift just below the surface of his conscious brain. There was something mysterious about the chamber, a mystery that was not solely created by its vastness and the shadows that filled it. Without knowing why, Ulrich thought that, though it was bounded by miles of solid rock in all directions, it had no proper dimensions that could be measured by the means normally employed. It was as if it extended into planes that did not conform to the Earth's space and time. Planes that were in fact timeless and spaceless. He felt that he might attempt to cross the chamber from one wall to the other, but could walk forever without ever reaching the far wall. He made an attempt to dismiss these thoughts and put down his cup, breathing in deeply. There was no doubt that the wine relaxed and invigorated him. He pointed to the wine jar on the stone table and said to separates, A man might easily become addicted to such a brew. I'm addicted already, Moonglum grinned, pouring himself another cup. Separates shook his head. It has a strange quality, our Nechreian wine. It tastes pleasant and refreshes the weary. Yet, once his strength is regained, the man who drinks it is then nauseated. That is why we still have some of it left. But our stocks are low. The vines from which it was made have long since passed from the earth. A magic potion, Moonglum said, replacing his cup on the table. If you like so to designate it. Alric and I are of an earlier age, when what you call magic was part of normal life, and chaos ruled entirely, if more quietly than now. You men of the young kingdoms are perhaps right to be suspicious of sorcery, for if we are successful in readying the world for law, 
then perhaps you'll find similar brews by more painstaking methods. Methods you can understand better. I doubt it, Moonglum laughed, and you speak as if the learning of supernatural wisdom were easy. From what I hear, it takes a man of genius to master it. Separates smiled. That is true these days. Elric sighed. If we're not luckier than we have been, we'll see chaos unleashed on the globe and law forever vanquished, he said gloomily. And no luck for us if law is triumphant, eh? Separates poured himself a glass of the wine. Moonglum looked sharply at Elric, understanding that much more of his friend's unenviable predicament. You said that there was more work for me and my sword, Separates. What is its nature? Elric asked. You have already learned that Jagreen Lern has summoned some of the Dukes of Hell to captain his men and keep his conquered lands under control. Yes. You understand the import of this. Jagreen Lern has succeeded in making a sizable breach in the law-constructed barrier which once kept the creatures of chaos from wholly ruling the planet. He is forever widening this breach as his power increases. This explains how he could summon such a mighty assembly of Hell's nobility where in the past it was hard to bring one to our plane. Arioch is among them. Arioch had always been Elric's patron demon, the principal god worshipped by his ancestors. That matters had reached such a stage conveyed to him, deeper than anything else, the fact that he was now a total outcast, unprotected by law or chaos. Your only close supernatural ally is your sword, Separates said grimly, and perhaps it's brothers. Brothers? Brothers? What brothers? There is only the sister sword Mornblade, which Divim Slorm has. Do you remember that I told you how the twin swords were actually only an earthly manifestation of their supernatural selves? Separates said calmly. I do. Well, I can tell you now that Stormbringer's real being is related to other supernatural forces on another plane. I know how to summon them, but these entities are also creatures of chaos and therefore, as far as you're concerned, somewhat hard to control. They could well get out of hand. Perhaps even turn against you. Stormbringer, as you have discovered in the past, is bound to you by ties even stronger than those which bind it to its brothers, who are lesser beings altogether. But its brothers outnumber it, and Stormbringer might not be able to protect you against them. Why have I never known this? Mm, you have known it in a way. Do you remember times when you have called to the Dark Ones for help, and help has come? Yes, you mean that this help has been supplied by Stormbringer's brethren? Much of the time, yes. Already they are used to coming to your help. They are not what you and I would call intelligent, though sentient, and are therefore not so strongly bound to chaos as its reasoning servants. They can be controlled to a degree by anyone who has power such as you have over one of their brothers. If you need their help, you will need to remember a rune which I will tell you later. And what is my task? To destroy the Dukes of Hell. Destroy? Separates. That's impossible. They are Lords of Chaos. One of the most powerful groups in the whole realm of chance. Separates. I could not do it. True, but you control one of the mightiest weapons. Of course, no mortal can destroy the Dukes entirely. All they can hope to do is banish them to their own plane by wrecking the substance which they use for bodies on Earth. That is your task. Already there are hints that Dukes of Hell, namely Arioch and Balan and Marluk, have taken some of Jagreen Lern's power from him. The fool still thinks he can rule over such supernatural might as they represent. It suits them, perhaps, to let him think so. It is certain that with these friends, Jagreen Lern can defeat the Southlands with a minimum of expenditure in arms, ships, or men. Without them, he could do it, but it would take more time and effort. Therefore, it gives us a slight advantage to prepare against him while he subdues the Southlands. 
Alric did not bother to ask Separates how he knew of the Southerner's decision to fight Jagreen Loon alone. Separates obviously had many powers, as was proved by his ability to contact Elric through the Seer. I have sworn to help the Southlands in spite of their refusal to side with us against the Theocrat, he said calmly. And you'll keep your oath by destroying the Dukes if you can. Destroying Ariok and Balan and Marluk. Arik whispered the names, fearful that even here he might invoke them. Ariok has also been an unhelpful demon, Moonglum pointed out. Many's the time in the past he has refused to aid you, Alric. Because, Separates says, he already had some knowledge that you and he were to fight in the future. Though the wine had refreshed his body, Alric's mind was close to snapping. The strain on his soul was almost at breaking point. To fight the demon god of his ancestors. The old blood was still strong in him. The old loyalty still present. Separates rose and gripped Ulrich's shoulder, staring with black eyes into the dazed and smouldering crimson ones. You have pledged yourself to this mission, remember? I pledged. But Separates, the Dukes of Hell, Ariok, I wish that I were dead now. You have much to do before you'll be allowed to die, Alric, Separates said quietly. You must realise how important you and your great sword are to fate's cause. Remember your pledge. Alric drew himself upright, nodding vaguely. Even had I been given this knowledge before I made that pledge, I still would have made it. But... What? Do not place too much faith on my ability to fulfil this part, Separates. The black Nehranian said nothing. Moonglum's normally animated face was grave and miserable as he looked at Auric standing in the mighty hall, the firelight writhing around him, his arms folded on his chest, the huge broadsword hanging straight at his side, and a look of stunned shock on his white face. Separates walked away into the darkness and returned later with a white tablet on which old runes were engraved. He handed it to the albino. Memorize the spell, Separate said softly, and then destroy the tablet. But remember, only use it in extreme adversity, for, as I warned you, Stormbringer's brethren may refuse to aid you. Auric made an effort and controlled his emotions. Long after Moonglum had gone to rest, he studied the rune under the guidance of the Nehranian, learning not only how to oralize it, but also the twist of logic which he would have to understand and the state of mind into which he must put himself if it were to be effective. When both he and Separates were satisfied, Elric allowed a slave to take him to his sleeping chamber. But slumber came hard to him, and he spent the night in restless torment until the slave came to wake him the next morning, found him full-dressed and ready to ride for Pantang where the Dukes of Hell were assembled.